I don't know whether I'm having a private meeting with Sheldon and Miriam or not. Um, I haven't looked at my schedule yet for tomorrow. That's New Jersey Governor Chris Christie. He is going to Las Vegas this weekend, but he told reporters today what he was not sure about was whether he would get a personal one-on-one -on -one with, yes, Sheldon and Miriam, as in Sheldon, Adel uh, I should say Sheldon and Miriam Adelson, the billionaire casino magnate, and his wife poured at least $92 million into super PACs during the 2012 election. Sheldon Adelson clocks in at one of the richest people in the world with $38 billion. You may remember back in 2012 when the press marveled at how Republican presidential candidate Newt Gingrich vowed to stay in the race and insisted he wouldn't leave the field even after losing some major primaries. And maybe he was dogged, maybe he was really determined to see things through, but it didn't hurt that he had a little financial boost courtesy of Mr. Adelson and his wife. They poured $15 million into a pro-Gingrich super PAC called Winning Our Future, which mainly went towards advertising, a big assist at a time when the Gingrich campaign was very short on cash. By late March, Adelson decided he'd lost faith in that candidate and that Newt Gingrich was at the end of his line. Soon after, Newt Gingrich dropped out of the race, and Adelson threw his support behind a Romney super PAC, Restore Our Future, with twice the amount of money he gave to Gingrich. Because when you are worth $38 billion, $92 million of those dollars is just pocket change. In fact, that amount would translate to the median U U.S. household of a donation of about 95 bucks. Which brings us back to this weekend. At least four Republican governors, Chris, including Christie, are heading to Las Vegas for a four-day-long conference sponsored by a lobbying entity called the Republican Jewish Coalition. This is being held at the Venetian Hotel, of course owned by Sheldon Adelson, and he'll be in attendance. He's reportedly on the lookout for a more mainstream electable candidate this year. Those scheduled to address the coalition include former Governor Jeb Bush, Governor Scott Walker, and Governor John Kasich of Ohio, and yes, Governor Chris Christie. Fresh off a two-day-long tour of television screens just about everywhere, touting what he says is, as we've said, his exoneration in the bridge scandal, courtesy of the lawyers, who would help his office navigate whether a criminal investigation into the office might actually proceed. And today, with regard to that Las Vegas trip, Governor Christie told reporters he wasn't sure he'd have the one-on-one -on -one meeting with Mr. Adelson, although Las Vegas reporter John Ralston then tweeted out that a source tells him Christie definitely has that very meeting scheduled. Mr. Adelson is a very rich man, and he's a casino man. And the thing about men who run casinos is they're accustomed to winning, no matter what. So what can Sheldon Adelson win from a prospective candidate to whom he might generously donate? What matters to him that might involve politics and policy? Online gambling. That matters a lot to him. He's not a fan of online gambling because he says it hurts casinos and gamblers. Why go to one of his casinos if you can gamble from home, right? Adelson hates online gambling so much he helped launch something called a coalition to stop internet gambling, which has gained some traction in both parties. And earlier this week, Senator Lindsey Graham and Congressman Jason Chavitz just happened to introduce bipartisan legislation to fully ban some online gambling. The bill was originally drafted with a lobbyist working for Mr. Adelson. And three Republican governors have written to lawmakers in recent weeks in support of a similar ban on online gambling, Governor Bobby Jindal of Louisiana, Governor Nikki Haley of South Carolina, and Governor Rick Perry of Texas. This might pose a problem for Governor Christie if he's trying to impress Mr. Adelson this weekend because, we looked this up last year, the governor legalized internet gambling in his home state of New Jersey. But this is what matters to Sheldon Adelson right now. He may not even pick the candidate who wins the election next time around. He didn't do that in 2012. But he has enough power and clout in one party to influence political fights about federal legislation. So welcome to Vegas, governors. Sheldon may not always pick the winners in the race. But as a casino man, he knows how to run more than one game at once. He can lose an election here and there and still win the battle for laws that boost his business interests. And in Vegas, you already know this, the House always wins. Joining us now is Lucia Graves, staff correspondent for National Journal. Thank you for being here. Um, talk to us first about how Internet gambling became such a policy priority for so many of these folks. Well, I think you have to look at uh, Sheldon Adelson's priorities, and he... You know, he's always been staunchly pro-Israel, but he's first and foremost a casino mogul, and internet gambling is a threat to his brick-and-mortar business model. You know, if you can gamble online, you might not bother to come to his casino. And right now, there are two bills before Congress that would ban internet gambling, and so he is looking for GOP contenders to help him get this legislation through and, and ultimately to, to help his bottom line. 
Right, and, and you've written about this, and what's so interesting to me about it, looking at the history of campaign finance regulation, is the Supreme Court has spoken very specifically in the precedent about the appearance of impropriety. That is to say, not only the idea that laws are being bought, but that it's a problem for our democracy if the citizenry thinks there's an appearance of impropriety. This would seem to be exactly an example of that. Whether or not you can prove that it's a quid pro quo, there's obviously a stampede to go at internet gambling in a way that many of these Republican officials simply haven't ever cared about previously. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's a perfect test case for how big money can influence politics. Usually, it's much more invisible. When, when the Koch brothers give money, they go through a super PAC. But, but Sheldon Adelson is willing to just write a check to candidates that he supports, which is pretty unprecedented. It's pretty transparent. And it was so funny when I was writing this story. This was something that you can read between the lines and know that this is happening. But literally an hour after I had filed my story, I heard that Rick Perry, uh, who you know is pre running for president, is had written a letter to uh, leaders in Congress trying to ban internet gambling. Just you know, he just happened to drop that this week. Right, and that, and that the governor of Texas, you know, is constantly lobbying Congress over uh, internet regulation. What is the response here? What is the pushback to any of this? Uh, the pushback from, well. I mean, you can see why why GOP contenders are, are interested. Uh, Adelson's the biggest the biggest fish in the game. Um, in, in 2012, he gave 20 million to Gingrich's campaign and 100 million overall. So they can't afford to ignore that money, uh, however tacky it looks. Right, and so you don't you don't think there's a much of a consequence for them looking like they're on the take, basically. No, I think people don't really care about internet gambling except for Sheldon Adelson. I think that it's really, really important to him. And for other politicians, it's just not that big a deal, like Senator Lindsey Graham, who's taken it up in the Senate. He has never said a word about internet gambling before. And all of a sudden, he's spearheading the bill. And oh, Sheldon Adelson just happened to drop about $15,000 into Graham's reelection campaign because he's up this year. Uh, so things like that, just no one, no one cares as much as a casino mogul. Right, right. Yeah, there's a bit of a mismatch there. Lucia Graves, I know you've been reporting on this a lot from the National Journal. Thanks for your time tonight. Thanks for having me.